What's up everybody, it's Crypto Rocky bringing you the latest and most important news in the crypto world. Guys, you have to stay informed if you want to make money in crypto. That's why I make videos every single day talking about the most important things that you need to know to make money. So subscribe to the channel to increase your chances in making money in crypto. And like this video because it helps the channel out get recommended by YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. So today we're going to talk about Cardano and Bitcoin. And the most important topics we're going to talk about today are Cardano Hawkinson unveils the roadmap for September. IOHK presents timeline for full decentralization of Cardano. Cardano Emergo expands adoption through Bidali partnership. Bitcoin price to $500,000. Wilco Voss lays out ultimate bullish case. Bitmain eBank among 21 Bitcoin mining firms stripped of energy perks in Inner Mongolia. Russia is blocking Bitcoin related websites again. But first, let's check out what's happening to Bitcoin today. So in the last couple days, some really terrifying stuff happened. So Bitcoin passed our first support line. So after that, it touched our second support line. And then it tried to retest our first support line. And then it got crashing down, back down, all the way past our second support line. And boom, all the way here until $11,300, which was awful. So later it started to try and go up. So it almost even touched this second support line again, but it didn't, it looks like. And now it was going down and we're going back up again. So let's look at the RE chart again and see what's happening. So yeah, people are buying Bitcoin right now and we are 1% like plus so that's pretty good but the thing is guys we got a giant problem now we have more support levels i'm gonna just go back to the four hour chart so what do you have here we have four new support levels it's eleven thousand two hundred dollars we have ten thousand nine hundred dollars and ten thousand five hundred dollars and what's happening right now we have a falling ledge so what's happening so this is the falling funnel right over here and it's gonna keep going down and if that happens that's a good sign the problem is if it doesn't or if something else happens so if it continues this way to the right then we're gonna see it falling and crashing all the way down but if it continues and if it touches the 10.9k area then it's maybe gonna hit back up and boom skyrocket right up again and if that happens that's gonna be awesome but else what else it can happen is it can go down and it can just go stay down and that's the problem and if it hits this threshold here that 10.5k that means we can even see like less than that like 9.6k which is really really bad hopefully that doesn't happen hopefully it continues slowly going down a little bit here until it hits this line here and then it goes back up. If that happens, that's gonna be the best thing for Bitcoin. Cardano Hawkinson unveils the roadmap for September. The roadmap for the coming month of September foresees further performance improvements, new wallet functions, and more active marketing for Cardano. The release of Gaudian will make Cardano extremely competitive in the DeFi space, with first use cases such as stablecoins, oracles, and decentralized exchanges already in the pipeline. In a new video, Charles Hawkinson spoke about the goals for Cardano in September. As the IOHK CEO pointed out, within the next few weeks, his team will continue to focus on improving the performance of the Cardano infrastructure thus iohk will continue its work of the last weeks within the release of no version 1.19 and daedalus version 2.2 a few hours ago great progress has again been made in this area as hawkins has noted and has also been confirmed by the community so it looks like we're gonna see all the plans for cardano in september and it looks like they're gonna be really big and really important plans. In September, the focus in the Daedalus wallet area will also be on new features. Multisig, the Harvard Wallet Center, Delegation Portfolio, and the one-to-many delegation with the high 
priority. Furthermore, Hawkinson also plans to integrate YubiKeys, a QR code center and shielded paper wallets. Cardano's third development phase, Gogun, is coming. Regarding Gogun, Hawkinson announced that development is full swing and a detailed roadmap will be released at the end of September, with a rollout date during the month IOHK update. The third development phase of Cardano will add three important components to the ecosystem. So they're adding three really big components to the Cardano ecosystem. Firstly, IOHK will implement its own native asset standards so that tokens can be issued on the Cardano blockchain. Gogwen will also lay the foundation for Plutus, the smart contract platform, and will also introduce the extended UTXO model. This means that from this point on, smart contracts can be developed and executed on the Cardano blockchain. However, the implementation will not yet offer the full range of functions, but will create a low level. The third component will be the Plotus application framework, as this means that smart contracts can now be executed that go beyond simple things and are actually fully programmable. But this is something like the low level stuff. So you can write smart beyond tax, but many of the included libraries are not included in this foundation, mainly because it is a whole ecosystem play. And this ecosystem play is called Plutus application framework. According to Hawkinson, the rollout of these three components will make her down extremely competitive, especially in the DeFi sector. So when this rolls out, out. Cardano is going to be extremely competitive with the DeFi sector. That means more options for Cardano and more people are going to start using Cardano. IOHK is already talking to partners to identify the first useful use cases such as stable coins, oracles and decentralized exchanges. In addition, IOHK is already working with these partners on a strategy for rollout, although no official announcements can be made at this stage. Once you have these three things, we are extremely competitive for DeFi. There will be a lot of cool things that will make Cardano the desired platform for a beautiful DeFi portfolio. Another focus in September will be the marketing for Cardano. As Hawkins explained, marketing activates are to be ramped up. To this end, a new marketing manager has been hired at IOHK, who will start his work in September. So they're even getting a new marketing manager that's going to help them a lot to market Cardano in better ways. Marketing comes and it comes with full force. September will be the first month that we start to ramp this up. And we'll really see the impact in October, November and beyond. Well, this is great news for Cardano. They're updating, they're making new technologies. They're going to go hard in the DeFi sector, which is awesome news. IOHK presents timeline for full decentralization of Cardano. IOHK has presented a timeline for full decentralization of Cardano. According to this, 50% of all of blocks are to be created by community-driven stake pools by November 1st, while the network will be fully decentralized by March 2021. As reported by CNF, Cardano has made great progress. In the past days and weeks, with the launch of Shelly and the reaching of 1,000 registered stake pools, Pools. However, there is still a long way to go before Shelly main goal, the full decentralization of the Cardano network is achieved. While an important milestone was reached yesterday with the start of Shelly Epoch 3, actually Epoch 211, when the first block was created by a community-driven stake pool, the new stake pool will be fully decentralized. However, with the start of Epoch 3, only 10% of all blocks are validated by community-driven stake pools, while the federated nodes of IOHK and Emergo continue to create 90% of the blocks. The quota of federated nodes will decrease with each epoch over time. In a new blog post, IOHK has now shed light on what the concrete timeline for the full decentralization of Cardano looks like. The timetable for full decentralization of Cardano. As IOHK emphasizes, decentralization is at the heart of Cardano's mission, with the term consisting of three components, networking, block production, and governance. A key parameter is the D parameter which measures decentralization in block production. During the broad era, D equaled 1 as block production was completely taken over by IOHK 
nodes. With Epoch 3, the value D equals to 0.9 was reached. In HeadSense, IOHK describes the goal of completing decentralization as follows. Conversely, once D equals to 0 and decentralized governance is in the place and on chain, full decentralization will have been achieved. At this point, stake pools operators produce all the blocks. Block production is 100% decentralized. The community makes all the decisions on future direction and development. Governance is decentralized. And a healthy ecosystem of geographically decentralized stake pools are connected into a coherent and effective network. The network is decentralized. According to IOHK, this process of decentralization will be gradual process of collecting performance and data, monitoring the state of network in the process. Independently of this, however, from the beginning, all rewards will be distributed to the stake pool operators, so IOHK has no incentive to keep the parameters high. According to the now published schedule, the decentralization value will be set to D equals 0.8 in the next epoch, which means that 20% of blocks will be created by community-driven stake pools. Afterwards, however, the reduction of D will happen much more slowly. With each epoch, the value will decrease by 0.02 until the value to D equals 0.5. Epoch 228 is reached on November 1st. So this is their timetable right over here. And this is the last Epoch 228, November 1st, D equals 0.5. So that's 50 cross 50%. Cardano Emergo expands adoption through Badali partnership. Emergo has entered into a partnership with the Canadian payment process Badali. Cardano ADA holders can purchase Badali gifts cards using the cryptocurrency and then shop at the over 1,200 retailer brands including Amazon, Nike and Starbucks. Emergo which as the commercial branch together with Input Output Hong Kong as a development studio and the Cardano Foundation as non-profit organization is part of the trio behind Cardano's ecosystem, has entered into a strategic partnership with Canadian payment processor Badali. The partnership will enable ADA holders to purchase goods from more than 1,200 major retail brands including Amazon, Nike, Starbucks, Airbnb and many other directly through Badali's online gift card platform. So because of Badali, you will be able to use your Cardano to buy things in Amazon, Nike, Starbucks or even Airbnb which is amazing. Finally, you can use Cardano to buy things that you want, physical things. Throughout Badali's gift card site, gift cards that Badali Com, as well as partner ecosystems which include a variety of wallets and exchanges, ADA users are able to purchase name brand retail gifts cards to use in a desired region with the ADA at the equivalent fiat value. Emergo expects that the partnership will increase Cardano's ADA. Liquidity and partnership creates another real commercial use case for ADA, which will also promote global adoption. Gift cards are very popular because of their simplicity but are also vulnerable to a range of fraudulent activities. The official press release further states, Badali tends to address this problem by using the unique features of blockchain technologies to prevent fraudulent double spending in a standardized, variable and temper-proof manner. A Mergo announcement comes just a few weeks after signing a partnership with Traveler.com. The partnership enables ad owners to book 2 million hotels and apartments in thousands of destinations around the world. Ken Kodama, CEO of Emergo, commented on the new partnership with Badali as follows. Emergo is delighted to increase the real-world utility of Cardano ADA and give ADA holders the option to purchase products from a wide spectrum of some of the world's most well-known brands. We're happy to support Badali and platforms adding to the Cardano ecosystem with our resources. Cardano is a very promising project. As we've seen blockchain and other distributed ledger technologies develop, Cardano is third generation technology that is now finally getting us closer to the performance, scalability and cost efficiency required to bring the benefits or cryptocurrency to mainstream and begin to solve some very large global problems. We're very excited to be applying this towards the gift card space where fraud and lack of traceability are huge problems. Bitcoin price to $500,000. Will Kavos lays out ultimate bullish case. Tyler believes Bitcoin price is headed to $500,000 in the long term if it overtakes 
gold. Tyler, one of the first reported Bitcoin billionaires and the co-founder of Gemini, believes that the ultimate bull case for Bitcoin means reaching a target of $500,000. The theory for a $500,000 long-term Bitcoin price is straightforward. Luca Wells believes Bitcoin could overtake gold as the global market leading safe haven assets. Since the market capitalization of gold is established to be $9 trillion, while Bitcoin is valued at around $200 billion, this could leave a 45-fold upside. Does Bitcoin have what it takes to potentially overtake gold? So these two birds are saying that they think that Bitcoin will be the most worthy assets in the whole world and they take that Bitcoin will be worth $500,000, which is a lot. So we're now going to see why do they think so. Does Bitcoin have what it takes to potentially overtake gold? Investors have relied on the three stories of value for many decades, namely gold, oil and the US dollar. But all three values have distinct weaknesses. And this is their picture that they showed. So Bitcoin scarcity fixed, durability soft has software, portability can be sent anywhere in the world via the internet just like email, the resetability, yeah, zero point, you can literally sell 0 0.00001 Bitcoin storage, digital wallet, counterfeit difficulty, portability, it's expensive, has not occurred to date, adoption, market capitalization of 200 billion USD. While well, the other hand, gold is scarce, it's durability, is, it's hardware, portability, it's 25 pounds per bar, which is a lot basically bitcoin is just winning a lot basically gold and oil are difficult to transport and store but more importantly they both do not have a fixed supply as such if a large supply of both assets potentially gets discarded although the, the probability of it is slim it might negatively affect their value look of us explain currently gold is a reliable store of, of value and the classic inflation hedge supply the supply of gold is actually unknown while gold remains scarce or precious on planet earth the same cannot be said with respect to our galaxy the biggest problem of the us dollar is inflation and stability of its value as seen its performances over the past four months fears of inflation and economic uncertainty could destabilize the dollar for extended periods if inflation occurs in the long term Wilco was noted that the gold or bitcoin could outrun capital stored in banks he added inflation is coming money stored in the bank will get run over money invested in assets like real estate or the stock market will keep pace money stored in gold or bitcoin will outrun the discourage and money stored in bitcoin will run the fastest overtaking gold with bitcoin inflation is not possible due to its fixed supply of 21 a million bitcoin unlike gold and oil it would always remain scarce and is easy to transport and store given these characteristics of bitcoin Wilco was said he believes Bitcoin is the only long-term protection against inflation. It is undervalued but by a multiple of 45. In recent months, especially following the pandemic in March, the demand of digital products and currencies have soared. The concerns of inflation may further intensify after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell confirmed the central bank is looking to exceed its average inflation target. In fact, Tyler believes that the Fed is the biggest booster of Bitcoin's value. As an example, MicroStrategy, a public company based in the US, recently purchased 250 million worth of Bitcoin to use it as firm's primary treasury asset. Rapid adoption Option, growing institutionalization, proving infrastructure and rising liquidity could buy out the ultimate bullish case for the valuation of Bitcoin. Wilkowals stated, if we are right about using a gold framework to value Bitcoin and Bitcoin continues on this path, then the bull case scenario for Bitcoin is that it is undervalued by a multiple of 45. Say differently, the price of Bitcoin could appreciate 45 times from where it is today, which means we could see a price of $500,000 per Bitcoin. So basically because we have a limit to Bitcoin and Bitcoin is a lot easier to store, transfer, you can take 0 0.0001 Bitcoin, literally you can divide it in so many parts. It's the best thing ever, but gold is so hard, it's it's hard to transfer, it's hard to store, everything is just hard about gold, and plus, you can still find more gold out there. Maybe not in our planet, but one day we can find in another planet, and then the value of gold can be less and less. But for Bitcoin, that's not the case, because we only have 21 million Bitcoin, and that's it. There's not going to be any more than that, there's not going to be any less than that 
that's just a 21 million. Bitmain eBank among 21 Bitcoin mining firms stripped of energy perks in Inner Mongolia. Or 20 Bitcoin mining firms in China's Inner Mongolia have been stripped of electricity perks after clamped down by the local government. Okay, so looks like the government shut down a lot of Bitcoin mining firms. So let's see what happened. A document issued by the Department of Industrial and Information Technology for the Inner Mongolia Autonomous region on August 24th obtained by Coindesk shows the government agency has required a local electricity trade company to disqualify 21 Bitcoin mining from participating in energy trading. Chinese crypto news source Wu Blockchain first reported the document but did not provide the names of the firms on the list. Notable entities include two subsidiary of Bitcoin mining giant Bitmain in Inner Mongolia and other subsidiary of mining equipment manufacturer eBank. Also on the list is the Inner Mongolia branch of China Telecom, based in the city of Ordos. That suggests that the telecoms in China may also be involved in cryptocurrency mining activities in the region. The suspension means these mining firms will no longer be able to enjoy electricity discounts that come from a liquidity energy marketplace provided by the Inner Mongolia Power Group, a state-owned energy trading firm in the region. Kevin Pan, CEO and co-founder of the China-based mining pool Poland, said the policy will have some impact on the industry, at least in the short term. Term. The electricity for these farms will likely raise by 0.1 yuan or 0.014 dollars per kilowatt per hour, he said. The current electricity cost for mining farms in the region is around 0.21 or 0.28. 8 yuan per kilowatt hour. With the new policy change, the upper side of the range could reach a high as 0.38 yuan per kilowatt hour, Pan said. Such a seemingly negligible difference would in fact mean a significant increase of potential costs for energy in depths of crypto mining activities. If a mining farm is running at a full capacity of just 10,000 kilowatts, considered a relative small-scale industry, an increase of 0.014 per kilowatt means that the farm will incur an additional 3,316 potential costs per day. Which is a lot, guys. That's like 100k a month. <laughs> it's so much. The document addressed to Inner Mongolia Power Group said the suspension notice came after the government agency conducted on site inspections at over 30 big data and cloud competing companies in the region and discovered 21 of them are actually crypto mining firms. Okay, so they literally went to 30 companies. 30 com cloud company companies and found that 21 of them are crypto mining firms. Okay, that's 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 ki kind of amazing. Okay, okay. Then now I thought I thought like the number would be like maybe five or six of them, but no, everybody's turning their firms into like mining firm firms. So this is this is pretty interesting. The region wide inspection started late last year, as CoinDesk reported at the time. The aim was to close down Bitcoin mining operations that were without proper business registrations. They further targeted firms attempting to get electricity perks by disguising themselves as eligible entities. According to the Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index compiled by the Cambridge University, China had over 65% of the global Bitcoin mining computing power as of April this year, and in Mongolia accounted for 8% of the network total at the time. So only in Mongolia was has eight percent of the global bitcoin mining computing power so that's eight percent only in mongolia okay that's that's a lot that's a lot and china has 65 percent so that's more than the whole world put together so china china's winning china's winning at mining and bitcoin so yeah and, and even cryptocurrencies russia is blocking bitcoin related websites again best change that are you an aggregator of over-the-counter cryptocurrency providers in Russia is one of a number of websites being blocked by the country's internet censorship agencies. This is the third block of the firm by Russian authorities and comes as the result of a lawsuit brought by the Marosco, according to Best Change head of public relationship Nikita Zuberov. Best Change lists the current price and liquidity supply at the most popular OTC broker in Russia and its neighboring countries, but isn't involved in trades. Previous lawsuits were successfully overturned by Best Change in Kurt Zuberov said, while a court approved blocking of the website including best change on january 22nd the firm was apparently only notified on july 23rd we always hear about the lawsuits accidentally we never get a sub 
plan in time. And our lawyers always have to request a time extension to appeal first and then get to the lawsuit itself. The lawsuit also targeted cryptocurrency news, websites and even an online flower shop. All of which, according to Roscoe, were offering Bitcoin for a sale or goods in exchange for Bitcoin. Okay, literally a flower sh an online flower shop is dealing with Bitcoin. Are you serious? <laughs> an online flower shop is dealing with, with Bitcoin. What's happening? And they took down a flower shop. No. <laughs> The issuance and usage of Bitcoin is decentralized and can't be controlled by the state, violates Russia's laws. The court's decision reads, Best Chain said it plans to appeal the ruling and recommended users either employ a proxy to get around the block or go to the mirror version of the website using its .NET domain. Bitcoin is not illegal in, in Russia, but it may not be used as a mean of payment, according to Bill recently signed into the law by President Vladimir Putin. So Bitcoin is actually not illegal in Russia, but it cannot be used as payments in Russia. So you cannot pay anybody with Bitcoin. That's the thing. As far back as 2015, Russia was trying to limit access to crypto-related websites, blocking even resources like Bitcoin.org. The country's central bank said it su supported such measures in 2017 if platformers were selling cryptocurrencies in Russia. This change saw almost 3.3 million views in July, with most traffic coming from Russia, Ukraine, and Turkmenistan, according to similar web. OTC is the most popular way to buy crypto in Russia and the Commonwealth of Independent States countries Zubrov said. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you learned something new that's gonna help you at making money in crypto. Like this video and subscribe for more videos. It helps the channel out grow and it makes YouTube recommend my videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!